guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Brianna and today I'm back with another makeup review this time around I'm looking into the very first luxury eye palette from Wayne Goss and this is called Imperial Topaz so here is what Imperial Topaz looks like there we go so it's a very sort of simple looking neutral palette on the surface and I think it's got pretty much all your basics covered here you've got some really nice brown tones down the middle you've got a more russety ready kind of color you've got a true black up here a very sparkly champagne kind of color and then you've got a really light shade as well so I think that this is a beautiful six pan palette you've definitely got your options all covered here I think what I am going to do for this look is I'm going to do two separate eye looks and I am going to work sort of in an L shape I guess so this one here will be the first eye and then this one here will be the second eye so I'm going to start with the first eye and these shades do not have names they're all just numbers so I am just going to call out the numbers as I go um, if you did want to follow along but trust me my makeup tutorials are not complicated at all fairly easy to follow along especially when there's only a few shades each side so let's get into it I'm going to take my very very trusty blending brush I have already applied a really light base to my eyelids um, I have used the RCMA cream foundation today but I have used the MAC paint pot as well in the past in the shade painterly so it's really up to you and whatever you want to put down as your base and uh, number one I am going to go into number one which is sort of like a very light shimmery champagne -y kind of color probably not best for an overall matte shade it would probably be better for me to use that um, brownie color but I'm just going to do a really light look on this side of the eye just to show you that you can do some sort of toned down looks so I'm going to go into that brownie shade that matte shade now and I'm going to build it above that as well and just over the top oh yeah that's really nicely pigmented I barely picked up anything on the brush and it's already rubbed it off really really nicely oh that's stunning really nice beautiful so that is such a nice brown shade it's that beautiful mid-tone shade you could easily just wear this by itself and have like a really nice natural eye look or you could definitely add things to it and build it up and make it grow so I am going to do that. I am going to add that sort of russety shade, which this one was in number five, that mid-tone shade, and that sort of russety shade is at number four. So I'm going to use my trusty brush that I always use for shimmers. This is a very small MAC brush. Um, it is called a 512 SES. It's an old limited edition packaging from last year, but um, you can always find something similar in their regular line so definitely recommend going and checking it out so I'm just going to spray a little bit of a spray on it now this is not a hugely shimmery shade it, it does have some shimmer to it I'm just going to apply it on the lid oh yeah that's nice actually it's more on the pigmented side rather than the shimmery side it definitely has a shimmer to it but it's more just that nice pigmented color Oh yeah that's really pretty especially with my eye color because i've got blue eyes these sort of copper coppery russety shades are really pretty beautiful okay that's really pretty just a really i didn't put a lot on the brush i put like a really tiny amount and it's really blended in really nicely especially with the tone of it you you obviously don't want too much especially when you're as light as me it can get really crazy really quickly I'm just going to take my little inner corner brush that I like to use. This is a 513 SES. It's a really nice light inner corner brush. I am going to go into that number six shade, which is a very sparkly champagne -y style shade. And I will just use that for the inner corner um, because, yeah, that other shade is not quite right for an inner corner, I don't think. That first shade that I used. That's really pretty. Nice and light, not too heavy. It's, it's still got a nice shine to it, but it's not too intense. I'm just going to do the inner corner on this side while I'm at it because why not? Beautiful. 
Now you could obviously use the pure black that I'm about to use for a liner shade. I won't be doing that today because I don't normally wear a liner sort of look. Um, it's not something that I tend to go for, but I am going to work a little bit of that black just in the outer part of the lid and graduate it in. Um, and we'll just see how we go with that. Uh, so I am just going to use the black color straight, which is a little risky for someone like me who isn't super experienced with blending makeup, but I think I can just give it a try and just see how I go. So just dotting, I just picked up a really tiny amount. I am just going to move my mirror up. Oh, wow. That is intensely pigmented. I barely touched my brush in that pan. So wow. Okay. Fantastic. And I am just going to work it just above the lid. Just graduating it inwards. Oh, that's really pretty. I'm scared to pick up more just because I don't think it's going to completely blend. Okay. Wow. I mean, I, I barely touched it and it's just given this beautiful black color. Wow. Yeah, I would say if you're as light as me, all you need to do is just literally tap it just a tiny, tiny bit, like literally almost like you're mistakenly touching it, just like that little touch, just like that, and you will get this amount of pigment from that. My goodness. That's perfect. Once again, it's a really nice shade just to outline the eye. That's really impressive. I can imagine this would be fantastic for liner. I don't even have to use it in that way. And I know already it would be amazing for that purpose. So I am going to go back in with this brush. And because I'm going into a deeper shade now, I don't need to rinse it off. So it is number two. It is sort of like this camely shimmery shade here, the one in the middle at the top. So I'm going to lightly apply that to the lid. So as you can see, I've already gotten just two completely different styles of look from this palette, even though it looks pretty simple on the surface. Once again, I'm going in with a fairly light hand into the palette. I barely touched it. Let's give it a try. I've got to be very controlled with this. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. That's really nice. So this is less russety and more sort of like a goldeny brown, I would say. I'm just going to pick a little bit more up on the brush just because it needs a little bit more. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Beautiful. Yeah, so you can definitely see the difference. This is obviously more chocolatey and this is more russety and red. Wow. Okay, let me just have a little look. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Nice. Okay, so... Overall, my thoughts on this little palette, especially if you're doing natural looks, wow. I think this is a standout palette. They blended so unbelievably easily. I mean, that black blended all the way in and gave a really nice sort of grey gradient. I barely needed to touch the product, and it, it it's actually baffling me and blowing my mind, like, how a black can be so pigmented yet blend out so nicely. I'm still trying to figure that out myself because usually with black shades, when they're super, super pigmented, they can be really, really hard to blend out. And this is actually blended out so beautifully and it's given such a nice light gray wash on the lid. So the flexibility with this palette is fantastic because you can obviously take this black and make it into a gray shade really easily with a little bit of, of blending control and a little bit of control with the amount of product you pick up in the first place. So I think that this palette is a great palette, especially if you're a beginner, because you, you will only need a tiny amount of product to blend it and make it work. So I, I think definitely give it a try, especially if you're a huge Wayne Goss fan like I am. I mean, I just love the man. I think he is, his attitude to makeup is amazing. And I think that this palette definitely reflects that. I think my favorite shade is obviously number four. That coppery shade looks absolutely beautiful with my skin tone. That's definitely something I'm going to be digging into quite a lot. I don't think I have a shade that's exactly like this in any of the palettes that I own. I think this is a really, even though it's such a natural shade, it's quite unique in the fact that it it's not 
overly orange, but it's not overly red, but it's not overly brown. It's just that nice middle shade that can be actually really hard to find. And it's not too shimmery and it's not too matte. It's just that nice in-between of having that beautiful pigment that a matte does, but also has the shimmer that a shimmery shade does. But it's not over the top, like I said. It's just giving that nice glow to the lid. So overall, if you're looking at this palette, I wouldn't hesitate. I have been hearing so many great things about it. And obviously, I try to not let that cloud my judgment. I try to go into this with a fairly objective view. And yeah, I think I've given it a very objective review. I've tried it out in the ways that I feel that I would use it in. And I think that this is a fantastic palette. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching this demo slash review. I really appreciate it. I will have reviews of the other Wayne Goss uh, eyeshadow palettes coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. But until next time, take care. And I do hope to see you again real soon. Bye for now.